now that we've designed our VR room inside of Unity using some basic 3D objects, you see we have some arcade games, we have our door that gets us inside of our room, we have some text, arcade, and we have our school. Here's another arcade we made, we have some posters on the wall. And we have our game right here, which is our whack-a-mole. It's time to start coding. Coding can be very intimidating, especially textual-based coding to start. That's why most people start with block-based coding for um, students like MIT App Inventor or even uh, Scratch to kind of not have to worry about the typing and maybe typing something wrong where blocks will work. But so we're going to use C Sharp in this instance. Don't worry, we're going to walk you through everything. First start off, very simple. See this whack-a-mole zero, 00? That's our timer text. If we go back into our room, we have this thing called game text, and you can see timer text when I select it. It's that whack-a-mole 0, 0.0. Well, 0, 0.0 is because it's going to be our timer. We're going to have 30 seconds in our game, and we want this to count down. So to do that, we're going to have to program that. Go ahead and close this back, and let's go ahead and start. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an empty object, and instead of calling it game object, this is going to control our game, so let's call it game controller. Now, in order to add a script that we want to code, I'm going to go to add component. I'm going to call it the exact same thing, game controller. See here, it says it doesn't find it, so I'm going to click on new script. And I want to call the new script game controller. Yep. And I'm going to do create and add. So now you can see the game controller object right here. I added a game controller script. If you notice down here, you would see the script as well. Let's go ahead and clean up some of this. Put all of my materials inside of there. These posters are also materials for their coloring those. But if you look, when I first made the prefab, I did it like that, but I added some more stuff. I'm going to do apply, and then you can see it shows up correctly. So I, I knew I made changes to my mole in the previous video, but then showing up here is because I did not do apply. And I, apply can also, so for example, if I wanted this mole to be a little bit taller like that, and let's just say I wanted to stretch them out some, make them look like that, then I wouldn't want to have to do that to all of these other molds. But because they're prefabs, if I simply click on apply, you can see all of them got taller. And there you go. So there's our LR molds. And I showed you how to use apply. And we're going to switch these around in a second, but for now, let's get to what we want to do in this video, coding this. All right, so here's our game controller. This is the basic script that you can see, system, collections, generic, Unity engine. Every time you create a script, it's going to use this. Um, don't worry about the details of it right now. Just think about this is the standard anytime you make a script. Here's the talking about classes. Remember, we called our script game controller. So you have public class game controller. It's a mono behavior. Mono behavior has to deal with Unity. Don't worry about the specifics of it right now. Also, you can see it has a start function or procedure in there. It also has an update procedure or function in there. This is pretty much the basic template. And anytime you make a script, it's going to have this and you're going to update where you need. You'll add variables in. Um, don't worry about variables, we'll do that shortly. Um, start is when the scene first opens up. This is happens, think about it as every second, like a timeline. So whatever I put in here will update every second, which is exactly what we're gonna do for this. We want this to change every second to go down from 30 seconds to zero. So. How do we do that? We'll go ahead and open it. I can double click on this or from the inspector with my game controller, I can click here and click edit script. So either here or by double clicking, 
you see it's going to open up Visual Studio for me because I have it installed or it could open up the default editor for Unity if you don't have Visual Studio actually open. So here we go and as again you can see this is a standard, this is a standard. So very very simple. Let's work with updating this timer. What we're going to need is a reference to this inside of Unity. So to do that, back over here, we're going to make a variable. I'm going to call this timer variables. As a quick note, whenever you do two slashes, that's considered a comment. It doesn't compile this, it's just a note to yourself really good habit to start commenting all your code. If you go into programming, they're going to make you comment your code. So the first timer variable I want is a reference to that text. Well, I'm going to do public, which means I can access it from anywhere, which in our environment means in Unity. Public, I'm going to do text mesh timer text and I'm going to end it with a semicolon. Everything in C sharp you're going to see ends with a semicolon. So for that I'm just going to go ahead and save it. I'll come back over here and click on my game controller and you should see my inspector is going to update and it's going to show timer text. It's, a, it's looking for a text mesh. This allows me to drag in this whack-a-mole 00, 00 to here, and then now I have an instance that I can update. So let's go back to our room. Let's scroll down. Remember I called it timer text. So make sure game controller is highlighted. That way you can see this timer text. I'm simply going to drag timer text and drop it in here. That's the way I'm able to reference this inside of my code passing this unity game object which is just 3d text into this so now that I have that I can actually change anything so let's just do a very simple example so when this starts if I wanted to update my text and I'll put example here update text to say hello so what we would do this is our variable called timer text. So I want to say timer text dot. What do I want to change? I want to change the color. I want to change the picture. No, I actually want to change the text. I'm going to say equals to quotations. And again, you have to end it with a semicolon. So I'm going to say hello. I'll save that. Now, if I come back here, wait a minute. It's not saying hello. Well, if we play it, Oh, we're facing the wrong way. So we have to look at our camera. Camera's facing that way. I want my camera to be the opposite way, so I'm going to rotate it 180. There we go. Bring them back a little bit. Bring them up. All right, so now let's play. Remember it says whack-a-mole? Well look, it says hello. That's as easy as it is to update the text. But we don't want it to say hello, we want it to actually say whack-a-mole and go from 30 down to 0. So to do that, let's go ahead back. Again, let's get rid of that. We need to keep track of 30 seconds. And then update that constantly. So we're going to need another variable. So here, I'm going to make it public, that way when I'm playing the game I might want to make it longer than 30 seconds. The public float and I'm going to call it game timer. I'm going to say equals to 30f and 30f for float. I'm just going to put a comment next to this. This is 30 seconds for the game timer up here let's put a comment for this as well reference to our unity text so now 
we have a game timer. We have text. How do we update it? We're going to do it every second. So we're going to do it inside of update. A little bit of comment. Update the game timer. So to do that, I'm going to say game timer minus equals. I'm going to say time dot delta time. And this, in essence, subtracts one second from game timer. So that updates it. And now, update the text in Unity. We did that before. I'm going to say timer text dot text is equal to. I'm going to say whack a mole colon do a plus and I'm going to say game timer I'm going to put a semicolon so go ahead and save that and let's see what happens when we run so look at there very simple to update but the only issue is we don't want these milliseconds we don't care about that we have another issue. If we let this run all the way down, we're going to get negative seconds. So we have two things to fix, and then we'll wrap up this video. This is your intro to kind of coding some very simple C sharp. So we saw it working, but we're going to get rid of the milliseconds. So again, don't worry about what I'm typing here. Just follow along as you're learning coding. We're going to say math f dot floor, which is we're going to round. And I'm going to put, I want to round that. So let's save that and press play. So now you can see it rounded 27, 28, 26. We still have the problem when we get down here. It goes to negative numbers, which we shouldn't have. So let's fix that and we'll be wrap up this video. So now, so we want to make sure that game timer never gets under zero. And we'll update that. So that's going to be a conditional statement. Every single programming language, Python, Swift, Java, C Sharp, everything has conditionals. It's how computers make decisions. Um, it's normally if something and then you'll do something or else if something else. Very simple. So we update the text, but we only want to update. First we want to do is we want to check the timer. The game timer is greater than zero seconds because it just makes sense. So how does that look in code? We say if and we put whatever we want to check for inside of here. So what we're checking is if the game timer is greater than zero and it, since it's a float zero f. So in essence, check if game timer is greater than zero seconds. That happens. If that is true, we want to do this. We want to update that. Or else, that means it's negative down here. Let's say game less than zero seconds. I'm going to say else. And we'll handle that later on. You might say game over or something like that. Let's just go ahead and check that when we get down to zero, <coughs> this goes down to zero. Down here, let's just say update text in Unity to game over. So same deal. I'm going to say timer text dot text is equal to. And here, I'm going to say game over. Now let's save it and let's test. What should happen is once it gets to zero it should come down here because it's no longer greater than zero and the timer text should now say game over. So let's test it and see what we got. 29, 28. Game over and it's working. So that's your intro to coding. We've updated the timer. Go ahead to the next video and we'll start to get these guys moving and hiding.